A communication protocol is a set of rules and conventions covering many aspects of communication, including message content and format, bit encoding, signal transmission, transmission medium, and channel organization. It also includes procedures for coordinating the flow of data, including media access, clock synchronization, and error detection and correction. Data bits can be encoded into analog or digital signals, which can be transmitted via electrical, optical, or radio frequency sine waves. Bits are encoded in sine waves by modulating one or more wave characteristics. Possible modulation techniques include on-off keying and frequency, amplitude, and phase shift modulation. Channel organization describes the number of lines dedicated to a channel and the assignment of specific signals to these channels. A simplex channel uses one optical fiber or copper wire pair to transmit data in one direction only. A half duplex channel is identical to a simplex channel but can send a line turnaround message to reverse transmission direction. Full duplex channels use two fibers or wire pairs to support simultaneous transmission in both directions. Channels are often shared when no single user or application needs a continuous supply of data transfer capacity. In circuit switching, an entire channel is allocated to a single user for the duration of one data transfer operation. Packet switching, a time division multiplexing method, allocates time on the channel by dividing many message streams into smaller units called packages and intermixing them during transmission. Frequency division Multiplexing divides a broadband channel into several narrowband channels. Sender and receiver must synchronize clocks to ensure that they use the same time periods and boundaries to encode and decode bit values. A single shared clock is the most reliable synchronization method, but it requires sending clock pulses continuously from sender to receiver. Important characteristics of transmission media include raw data transfer rate, bandwidth, and susceptibility to noise, distortion, external interference, and attenuation. Bandwidth is the difference between the highest and lo lowest frequencies that can be propagated through a transmission medium. Higher bandwidth channels can reliably carry composite signals with more data content over longer distances. The effective data transfer rate can be much lower than the raw data transfer rate because of attenuation, distortion, and noise. Attenuation is loss of signal power as it travels through the transmission medium. Distortion is caused by interactions between the signal and the transmission medium. Noise can be generated internally or added through external interference. The signal to noise ratio is a measure of the difference between noise power and signal power. Twisted pair, for example the ethernet, twists help to cancel noise. Moderate shielding, and the quality standards, such as Category 5 and 6, are 250 MHz maximum per wire pair. Coaxial and twin axial are heavily shielded but are not very flexible. They can carry 500 MHz per carrier wire. Fiber optical cables. There are two types. Single mode, where the cable has different refraction properties in the center versus the edge, and it keeps the signal running right down the center or current DTR, which is greater than 10 gigabytes uh, up to a few dozen kilometers. It has a high cost to buy and or to lay the fibers. It's multi-mode. The outer cladding is effectively a mirror, and signal bounces down the line, but different wavelengths bounce at different angles, which skews the signal and effectively limits the length. It's much cheaper than single-mode fiber optic. It's fast DTR only over short distances. Wireless data transmission encodes bits in radio frequency, infrared or light signals transmitted through the atmosphere or space. RF signals are transmitted with a frequency band in the middle of to upper shortwave range. The desirable characteristics of those bands include relatively low transmission power requirements, relatively good penetration of physical obstacles, such as windows and walls, Wireless infrared and light signals require a line of sight between sender and receiver, which is impractical in many transmission scenarios. The difference between a signal's maximum and minimum frequency is called the signal bandwidth. The difference between the maximum and minimum frequencies that can be propagated through a transmission medium is called the medium bandwidth.
Data transmission with analog or digital signals has the same basic relationship between bandwidth and data carrying capabilities. For analog signals, wider bandwidth enables the transmission medium to carry multiple signals of different frequencies at the same time, which merge to form a composite signal that occupies more bandwidth than any of the component signals. Because each frequency carries a different data stream, data transfer rate increases as bandwidth increases. Higher bandwidth also implies higher data transfer rates for digital signals, although for subtly different reasons. Recall that digital signals are sent by using square waves, which are essentially short, powerful bursts of electrical or optical energy. But electrical and optical energy propagate through space, wires, or fibers as sine waves. Noise, distortion, and interference. Noise is any signal content detected at the receiving end of a transmission medium that wasn't part of the sender signal. Attenuation is loss of signal power as the signal travels through a transmission medium due to resistance. Distortion is the change in signal as it travels through a transmission medium. For example, echoes and resonance, selective attenuation for a complex signal, electromagnetic interference, EMI, which is extra signal added to the original signal during transmission by leakage into the medium. Note that these two terms overlap. For example, EMI is noise from the receiver's point of view. Loss of power equally across all parts of a complex signal is, is called attenuation, but it's also called distortion if it affects different parts of the signal by different amounts. Amplifiers and repeaters. The amplifier increases the power of a signal. The pros are that it's cheap, but the con is that it amplifies the noise in the signal along with the encoded data. A repeater listens to incoming signals and regenerates an outgoing signal with equivalent data content. Pros are that the noise in the input doesn't go into the output, but the con is it's a more complex device. As all electrical devices have become cheaper, repeaters have completely replaced amplifiers in data communications and computer networks. Error detection is always based on some form of redundant transmission. The receiver compares redundant copies of messages and requests re retransmission if they don't match. Increasing the level of redundancy increases the chance of detecting errors, but at the expense of reducing channel thr throughput. Common error detection schemes include parity checking, vertical redundancy checking, block checking, which is longitudinal redundancy checking, and cyclic redundancy checking. As in any complex design, characteristics are in conflict and the chosen methods is or are a compromise among them. For example, an error detection method with high redundancy, such as sending two copies of every message and having the receiver compare them, increases true error detection probability, which is good, increases false positives, which is bad, and also decreases the channel efficiency in most cases, also bad. We have explored how data is encoded and transmitted between computer systems. Data communication technology is the foundation of computer networks, but other software and hardware technologies are required.